So once you're done with literature search and review, then you need to convert your research hypothesis into statistical hypotheses, which is a pair of refined research questions to be tested with a statistical model. Again, not every research question is subject to this process um, if your research is mainly descriptive or qualitative in nature. In setting up statistical hypotheses, you need to formulate two competing hypotheses so that they are mutually exclusive and exhaustive. Here, um, the mutual exclusivity means that there should be no overlap between the two statements so that only one of the statements can be chosen after a statistical test. And um, mutually exhaustive uh, means that the two statements should cover all conceivable possibilities. So let's just uh, take a look at an example. Um, so let's consider the following research question, whether or not taking lutein supplement is good for vision. So lutein is a chemical known to be concentrated in the macula, uh, which is responsible for the most accurate vision um, in the back of, your, uh, back of the eye. So in some big studies on uh, AMD, Right, um, age-related macular degeneration. Uh, the data suggested that the chemical may have some beneficial effect on slowing down the progress of the disease. However, um, it is not very clear if the substance will be beneficial to normal vision in general. Well, let's assume that you think it will be, and you want to conduct research. And in this case your research hypothesis will be that lutein is good for, good for vision, right? And now, um, to have a complete statistical hypothesis, you need another hypothesis, uh, which is called a null hypothesis to complement your research hypothesis. In this case, the null hypothesis going against your research hypothesis, saying that lutein is not good for vision. So you can think of the null hypothesis as a kind of a devil's advocate. Now the null and research hypothesis are mutually exclusive in that they both cannot be true at the same time. And also, they are mutually exhaustive because together they cover all the possibilities. So the lutein will be either good or not good, right? So this actually covers all the possibilities, basically. So if you think about the research question again, is lutein good for vision? Then it sounds too general for a practical investigation and does not capture what we want to do to test the hypothesis. So um, you probably remember I briefly mentioned this uh, before uh, about the uh, opera uh, operationalization, right? And so if you think about this, uh, if we go back to this question again, is lutein good for vision? You know, what do we mean by good or bad? And what do we mean by vision? Is it something measurable at all. So you need to make your research question more specific and suitable for statistical testing by way of operationalize, uh, operationalizing the relevant variables uh, you want to measure. So what is operationalization? Um, this process can be defined as a process of Detailing your research question further to a practically testable or measurable specification. So this process enables abstract or general ideas or concepts empirically observable or measurable by bridging them 
uh, with relevant measurements that are thought to represent the ideas or concepts. So in doing so, we need to consider the most optimal uh, uh, or relevant variables to measure to answer the research question. For example, um, visual acuity can be one aspect of vision. Then we can say uh, that you know having a, vi a better visual acuity can be a good thing for vision or vice versa. So I just mentioned the variables, and then the variables are basically the things or constructs that change in either a set of attributes, categories, traits, or qualities. Um, and if uh, the things are changing this kind of properties, then we can call this variable as qualitative variables. Uh, examples of such variables are sex um, or color of someone's hair or eye because the values you can assign to these variables are qualities right, or categories. So sometimes uh, the qualitative variables are called categorical variables. On the other hand, if a variable changes in a characteristic taking on, taking on different amount or numerical quantity, then we call this kind of variable quantitative variable. So the visual acuity measured in log mar can be an example of quantita quantitative variable because we assign numbers at the numerical quantities to represent visual acuity in log mar unit. And it is very important to identify these variables in a study because the you know, goal of many studies is to show if changes in uh, one variable, one or more variable, would change or affect one or more of the other variables. And we have special name. Uh, some other special names uh, to indicate, to differentiate uh, these two different variables, which are called response or explanatory variables. So when the goal of a study is to examine the changes or relationship between any two variables, each has different names depending upon the role they play in the investigation. So the response variable measures an outcome of a research uh, or study. So if, if you think about this, um, the example of the lutein, um, the response variable will be the visual acuity, right? So this variable is assumed to change as a consequence of changes in explanatory variable. Um, in the lutein example, it will be uh, the uh, taking lutein, or the lutein will be the exploratory variable, right? And the response variable is um, sometimes called in other names such as outcome measure or dependent variable. Okay, so this is dependent variable because the response or the, uh, the measurement of this variable is dependent upon the changes in explanatory variable. So, the explanatory variable um, basically explains or influences changes in a response variable. So, this explanatory variable may or may not uh, be uh, one of the direct cause of the changes in the response variable. And the explanatory variable also has different name uh, called an independent variable. Now, let's take a look at the uh, following uh, sample studies to see if we can identify response or explanatory variables in each of the study. So the first one is to investigate the relationship 
between the typical amount of alcohol a person consumes per day and the change in the level of alcohol in blood after an hour of drink. So this study is, um, you know, the, the the response or explanatory variable is quite um, obvious uh, when they are looking at the relationship between the two variables. So in this case, the response variable will be the change in the level of alcohol in blood after an hour of drink, um, because this is an outcome or the consequence of drinking a typical amount of alcohol, right? So in this case, the typical amount of alcohol a person consumes per day will be the explanatory variable, right? So this variable is responsible for the change in the level of alcohol in blood after an hour of drink, which is our response variable, right? So let's move on to the next study uh, where it says the NHS collects information across UK population regarding body height and weight to document the overall characteristic of the population. So in this case, it is not very clear um, if there is a response or explanatory variable because um, so in this case, what they are measuring, what NHS uh, uh, is measuring uh, is two variables, right? They are measuring um, body height and body weight. So these are the two variables they are measuring, but they are not necessarily looking at some kind of dynamics between these two variables, such as relationship or if there's any change between these two variables. So their goal is to just to describe the characteristic of the population. And they're not necessarily looking at some kind of a relationship between the body height and weight. So in this case, we do not have a specific response or explanatory variables. Okay, so they're just measuring these variables. By the way, these two variables are quantitative variables because uh, the values of height and weight, uh, we can assign the numerical values um, for those measurements. And this is the same as the first study. Um, those two variables are the numerical variables too. Now let's move on to the uh, final study where the study is to examine if patching an amblyopic eye for six months will improve the visual acuity acuity in the eye. So in this case, two variables are being measured. So one is the visual acuity in the amblyopic eye, and the other variable is basically the patch, right? Um, so this study is looking at the effect of patching on the visual acuity of the amblyopic eye. So this study will measure the visual acuity in the amblyopic eye and to see um, if the change in visual acuity is a consequence of patching. So um, the explanatory variable in this case, in this study is patching an amblyopic eye, whereas the responsible variable, a response variable is the change in the visual acuity or the improvement of the visual acuity in the amblyopic eye. Right, so um, we've been talking about the uh, statistical hypothesis and this pair of statistical hypotheses uh, have special name. So the null hypothesis is um, the statement about the values of unknown response variable when no effect is assumed. So when you're setting up a null hypothesis, um, uh, typically no change, no difference 
no relationship is expected or assumed. And this is the hypothesis you want to refute in favor of alternative hypothesis or H1. And this is typically your research hypothesis you want to support. And sometimes the null hypothesis is called H0 or H0. So if we just go back to the, our Lutein example, then the corresponding null hypothesis for that study will be like overall taking Lutein will make no difference in visual acuity. So this is going to be the null of that Lutein study. So this is an example null hypothesis you can set up. On the other hand, the alternative hypothesis is basically the opposite statement against the null hypothesis H0. So typically, you assume a change, difference, or relationship in the response variable when you're setting up uh, alternative hypothesis. And as I said, this is typically a research hypothesis that you want to support against the null hypothesis. So um, in the Lutein example, the alternative hypothesis will be overall taking Lutein will make a difference in visual acuity.